This is Chiapas Mission Trip Orientation, segment number seven. I promise it's the next to the last one, and in this segment we'll be talking about cultural respect. I mentioned in the last segment about the conservatism of the so-called people, and part of showing cultural respect is to observe the cultures of the people in the land that you come to visit. We use the expression, when in Rome, live and practice as the Romans. So while you're in Mexico, we'd ask that you try to follow uh, many aspects of the so-called uh, culture and, and respect those through your own behavior while you're here. Dress is one of the ways in which Americans struggle to meet those expectations. And we sort of come to a, a middle ground. But while you're here, it's hot, we're not used to the heat. Generally speaking, it's fine to wear shorts on the work site, shorts as, as, you know, in your leisure activities and on your free day when you're playing tours for a couple of days. It's fine to wear shorts as long as they're long enough. Make sure that they're at least fingertip length. Make sure that they don't expose your midriff for ladies. Make sure they don't expose your boxers if you're guys. Uh, dress for church. Uh, also needs to be conservative. For guys, this means a collared shirt. Doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be buttoned up. It can be a polo shirt. Um, needs to have a collar. Khaki pants or something besides jeans would be preferable. Uh, just be sure you're neat. Sandals for guys, rainbows, uh, anything you want to wear on your feet is generally not a big deal. For women, you want to be sure that your shoulders are covered and that your skirt is below your knee length. Um, I recommend something like a t-shirt with a broom skirt. It's easy to pack. It doesn't matter if it gets wrinkled. It's very cool and comfortable here. Um, with regard to uh, leisure tops for women, it's important to remember that your shoulders need to be covered. If you're on a work site and it's super hot and sticky and you want to pull your uh, your shirt sleeve up like this, that's fine, but in general, no tank tops, no tube tops, no midriffs, no spaghetti straps. Um, you will see people here in the community at large who may wear those kinds of things, but they are not traditional so-called people, and they would not be uh, looked upon favorably by the traditional so-called people. And so this is one of those things where being, being conservative is really important. Ironically, in terms of body parts that are considered sexual, uh, the cell phone people recognize the backs of the arms and the backs of the legs as more sexual or more, or more sexual. Don't ask me, I don't get it either. On the other hand, breasts are not considered sexual. Breasts are a feeding station. And so it's not uncommon to, have a, to see a woman whose entire breast is exposed feeding her baby in a worship service while she's walking down the street, while she's sitting on the side of the road, that is not uncommon. And again, this is a cultural difference between the United States and Mexico and one that I don't want to surprise you. Let's go on and talk a little bit about sort of daily interactions. I am the personal poster child for the loud American. I have a loud voice. I don't hear particularly well. I get louder and louder the more excited I am. I also need people to remind me of how rude that is here in Mexico. When you are in the airport, when you are in restaurants, when you are out in public, do your best to uh, try to use a lower voice and, and, and call, not call so much attention to yourself with your, with your loud mannerisms. It's very American and, and considered very rude in this culture. Another thing that's different with the, with the cell call people is how they show affection. Um, their sense of distance from person to person and within your personal space uh, is generally shorter. It's not considered rude to stand very close to someone when they're talking to them, and it's not uncommon for there to be lots of handshaking and lots of hugs in this culture. Uh, you can expect that while you're here. On the other hand, it's very much in, in an exchange of affection between people who have a platonic relationship or who is looked upon as a brother or sister in Christ. When it comes to romantic relationships, generally speaking, there's not a lot of an expression of affection. If you are a part of a married couple, when you come here, 
anticipate that it, it's fine to, to kiss your spouse good night or to kiss your spouse good morning or to hug each other briefly. But at the same time, you, you still want that to be very limited and, and not something that's, um, that's prominently displayed. If you are not married, and you are a part of a couple and your, your partner happens to be a part of this group, please try to sort of put that relationship on hold for the week. It's not like you aren't going to talk and engage with each other in a, in a, in a more intimate way than you would with other members of your group, but at the same time, there is very, very little display of affection between non-married people in a romantic way in public in this culture, at least within the cell phone culture. Again, it's like the spaghetti straps. You'll see it in the community at large, but it's generally frowned upon by the cell phone people and something that we would encourage you to avoid. No matter how close you are with that person who's not your spouse in the United States, while you're here, keep your hands to yourselves and keep a respectful distance between yourself and that other person. Um, let's talk a little bit about gifts. Uh, we, we come as Americans knowing that we have, we have lots to share and we, have, and we want to uh, contribute and share what we have with those who have less than we do. If you bring gifts to be shared with the community here, it's really important that those gifts be shared in a very planful kind of way in collaboration with Pastor Pablo Feliciano. Uh, this is a culture where there's a lot of a lot of jealousy. And if I give something to one person but I don't give something to this person, then when I leave, there's conflict between these two people and I made it happen. I know that no person who's coming on a mission trip comes with the intention of creating conflict in their, in their midst when they, when they leave and go back to the United States. And gifts can be a way that that can happen very unintentionally. Uh, monetary gifts are the same way approached by an individual or by a family with a request for money, please politely um, beg for some time to sort of evaluate that question and come and talk to us and talk to Pablo about that question and, and, and how you may feel called but how you want to be sure that responding to that request doesn't create conflict uh, after you leave. Those are some of the kinds of things that we as Americans don't think about that are important in terms of um, making sure that we do no harm from when we When we continue with the final segment, we're really going to address the whole issue of relationships. And in fact, it's about relationships and, and furthering the kingdom of God that, that missions is really all about in many respects. And so we'll wrap up by talking about how to contribute in a mission experience, how to build a relationship with brothers and sisters in Christ, and how that furthers the kingdom of God here on earth. If it hasn't been clear up to this point, please do not plan to consume any alcohol while you're in Chiapas. Please do not plan to consume any tobacco products while you're in Chiapas. Please refrain from dancing. And please refrain from open displays of affection with people to whom you are not married, no matter how close you are, no matter how affectionate you may feel towards them. That extends to not developing romantic relationships between yourself and members of your group or members of the team here in Mexico.